And now it's my great pleasure to introduce to you the First Lady, Janet Halcombe, the wife of Indiana's 51st Governor, Eric Holcomb. She grew up on a horse farm near Muncie, Indiana, where horses and ponies were her first passion in life. She also developed a love of the arts, particularly drawing early on in life, and went on to complete her bachelor's and master's degrees in fine arts at Ball State University. As the daughter and granddaughter of a small business owners, some of her most valuable lessons were learned at the family dinner table. Beginning in 2009, she served as vice president of her family's manufacturing business, r and Engineering. For a decade prior to joining the business, Janet met, led many record-setting political fundraising efforts at the federal, state, and local levels. And she has used her fundraising exper experience to benefit many nonprofit organizations. As First Lady, she actively promotes development op opportunities for women in business in partnership with the Indiana Economic Development Corporation. She's an advocate for youth organizations such as 4-H and Scouting, and she's engaged in combating infant mortality. She's a, foundation, she's a foundation board member of the state's largest and most comprehensive children's hospital and serves on the board of directors for an organization that promotes Hoosier artists. Janet and Eric are staunch supporters and defenders of the Second Amendment. Both are life members of the NRA Indiana Rifle and Pistol Association, the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, and the Wild Sheep Foundation. Janet is a certified pistol instructor and has led training classes throughout the state, often partnering with the Indiana National Guard and members of law enforcement. She particularly enjoys sharing her passion for shooting sports and personal protection with other women. Janet enjoys cooking, reading, gardening, equestrian sports, and bike riding, and anything that involves being outdoors, including fishing and hiking. Governor and First Lady Holcomb live in the Indiana Governor's residence with the first dog, Henry. Henry is a miniature schnauzer whose fans on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram number in the thousands, and I'm told that he's more popular than either of his humans. Won't you please join me in welcoming First Lady Janet Holcomb. Thank you, Renee. So it's my first time at Sheep Show. I'm a less than one club member. So standing by <laughs> Round of applause there. So standing before a room of such accomplished hunters is a little intimidating. When Gray asked me to address you this evening, I felt a little perplexed about what I could possibly share about hunting and conservation that you don't already know. I guess I'll uh, start by sharing the background on what really brought me here this evening. So in January 2008, our home was broken into while we were sleeping. My purse was stolen, but no other harm was done, and we slept through the incident. In the days and weeks to follow, I hardly slept at night and did not feel the same sense of security in our own home. It didn't take long for me to realize that I had to take control of the situation. So I was a farm kid and grew up in proximity of guns, but I didn't really understand them or feel confident in safely using them. Following this incident, I decided it was time to confront my uncertainty. I reached out to friends and started going to the range, shooting, learning about safety, asking a lot of questions, trying a lot of different guns, and eventually I purchased my first pistol, a Kimber 1911. From there, I took defensive classes until I felt confident in marksmanship and understanding defensive situations. A few years went by, I would shoot occasionally, still focusing on defensive and tactical training. 
And as I become, became more proficient, I really grew to love shooting sports. I've always been very competitive, so I loved that aspect of time on the range. Measuring my progress and watching my accuracy improve was very rewarding. My gun collection grew, as did the number of friends I was forming with fellow shoot shooters. I met some incredible people through shooting sports, some of whom I count amongst my closest friends. Along the way, I started taking my girlfriends to the range occasionally and truly enjoyed sharing my newfound passion with them. I pursued an instructor certification because I really wanted to present the information and terminology consistently. I typically work with women who have never held a gun, and I have been fortunate to provide training for hundreds of women and girls across the state of Indiana. Around, around the time frame I completed my certification, I also decided I wanted to try hunting. So again, I reached out to friends. I learned the basics of shotguns in, in preparation for an upland hunt and I had very limited success on the clay's, clay range the first few times I went. The morning of my first hunt, I watched someone else shoot first, but when the dogs took point for the second rooster, I stepped up and told the rest of the group, I've got this. When the rooster took flight, I felt like I had tunnel vision. Everything around me kind of disappeared, and I was laser focused on that bird. I dropped it with a single shot, and I was kind of hooked. Hunting adventures are not unlike gun collections, in that one seems to lead to the next. Whether it's around a literal or metaphorical campfire, time spent with other hunters, trading stories, and uh, sharing information always opens our eyes to new opportunities. I've continued to bird hunt and hunt ducks, geese, predators, large game, and I've gone helicopter hog hunting in Texas a couple times. That was great fun. Elective office came as a bit of a surprise. Life changed quickly and dramatically for us in 2016 when my husband was asked to fill a midterm vacancy as lieutenant governor. He was sworn in on March 3rd and we were going to be running as part of a ticket with the governor in that November. Four months later, we moved up the ballot to governor when Donald Trump asked Mike Pence to be his running mate. We dove headfirst into a 106-day campaign. Of course, we won. The day after the election, people started asking me what my agenda was going to be as first lady. I knew very quickly that shooting sports was going to be part of the portfolio. I also knew that taking a, that sort of stand with firearms and the Second Amendment was going to be somewhat of a risk. It was and is something I was willing to take. I've always been careful with regard to messaging about firearms, shooting sports, and hunting. I hold a strong belief in training and consistently emphasize safety as the hallmark of responsible gun ownership. Remarkably, I have never had significant pushback. If there's any advice I might offer in this area, try to remember how little the general public truly understands about matters involving firearms and hunting. People without knowledge of guns don't understand that a pen that a firing pen has to strike a primer, whether it's through a trigger pull or engaging a hammer for a firearm to discharge. Nor might they understand that protecting the health of wildlife through population control and hunting. So literally from day one, I have promoted shooting sports for our first inaugural following the 2016 election my husband and I hosted his and her shooting events. His event was held at an iconic gym, Hinkle Fieldhouse, where he shared his love of basketball. 
My shooting event was held at one of our military bases, Camp Atterbury. Last year, I was able to repeat this for our second inaugural, and attendees participated with live fire and simulators. I was also able to highlight some of the training and capabilities of our Indiana National Guard. I've hosted wild game dinners at the governor's residence and have shared my harvest with visitors and dignitaries. One accomplishment that I'm very proud of is helping to establish a state-of-the-art shooting sports competitions range, also at Camp Atterbury. The NRA is in the process of moving their national competitions to Indiana. Last year, we hosted over 90 days of pistol and rifle sports competitions, and we will continue to add to that. My role as First Lady provides a platform that I never would have imagined, and I've gotten to do some really incredible things. I've attended the International Sniper Competition at Fort Bragg, where elite military snipers from allied nations across the globe compete. I trade frequently with our Indiana SWAT teams, I'm a, uh, as well as with members of the Special Forces. And during a trip to Israel, I did counterterrorism training with our nation's top instructor, and I'm frequently invited to hunt and shoot across the state. Looking back, I realized that being the target of criminals, while it was a ter terrible experience at the time, changed the trajectory of my life, and I actually feel grateful. In 2019, I harvested my first bull elk in Colorado on, while I was on a hunting trip with my friend Christy Titus. On the same trip, I harvested an antelope while hunting with Jenny Gordon, the First Lady of Wyoming. When my mounts arrived, I shared my intentions to display them in our large event room at the residence. The governor was not in agreement with this initially and was uh, concerned that some guests might be offended. It took me about two weeks, but um, the mounts look great, and they are in fact in our event room. He knew who he was marrying. I, I don't know why he wasted two weeks on that. But I share my story, my history, as part of a larger message tonight. The past two years have certainly been challenging for everyone. The good news for those who are invested in conservation is that more people than ever are enjoying the outdoors. Since the beginning of COVID, state and national parks have seen record attendance. People are looking for new ways to share time with family and friends and new forms of recreation. With more people exploring the outdoors, there is a very unique opportunity to engage a new constituency in hunting and conservation. By providing opportunities for people to try shooting and hunting, we can expand our ranks and cultivate the next generation of enthusiasts. That can happen one group or one person at a time. As it did with me, a late onset hunter, I will, it will likely involve a series of small steps for the uninitiated to arrive at hunting, but they can get there. I believe it all comes down to one thing, mentorship. I challenge each of you to find at least one person to mentor before we gather here again next year. Take someone to shoot, firearms or archery, share some game meat, talk about your harvest along with why you hunt. Take someone fishing or out to glass for animals and use the opportunity to talk about the North American model. If you have the time and the ability to host an event or invite someone to a Second Amendment or conservation dinner. There are endless ways to get folks interested and to pay it forward. I'm going to use my dear friends as an example. Jim and Leanne Craig host events annually to help bring women and kids to shooting sports. They truly believe in giving back, and through their organization, the Craig Family Camp provide opportunities for anyone who is willing to learn. It is due to their mentorship and guidance that I have a doll sheep hunt scheduled in August. <laughs> and ultimately, it's the reason I'm here tonight. Next, 
Rooms of hunters are often older, white, and male. Now gentlemen, we are incredibly grateful for your support. And in most cases, you're the reason why, why the women are here to hunt. We want to preserve this way of life, but we need to invite people, of hunting and, to, people to hunting and conservation that don't necessarily look like us. Following the 2000 census, it was projected that half of the US population would be minority by 2050. That projection was changed following the 2010 census to half minority by 2044. The results of the 2020 census haven't been released, but I would expect for that timeline to accelerate once again. The population is changing. We need to build a bigger campfire that can accommodate anyone and everyone who is willing to join us in these treasured and time-honored traditions afield. We must also understand that the obstacles for populations new to these pursuits may require a little more time and a little extra finessing. It's incumbent upon members of the Wild Sheep Foundation to look for ways to bring new people to this lifestyle we so dearly love. Budgets and funding for sheep and all wildlife are tied directly to use and sales, whether it's through excise tax of, on guns and ammunition or the sale of tags. That's why we're here, to help, to do our part. Programs like Women Hunt are a perfect example of a pathway to the future. For me, one experience led to the next, and I think that is quite typical of adult onset hunters. Women in particular value opportunities to listen, learn, practice new skills before putting them to use in the field. We also know this, when a woman gets involved, the entire family gets involved. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you this evening. We are now going to take this event to the next level and share some ways that you can help make sure that we keep sheep and sheep hunters on the mountain.